What's up YouTube? Ian Sandusky back here again for Let's Machine. Today we're going to be doing a real quick little video for some of you guys who are new to machining or you know just kind of getting interested in machining. Maybe you you know haven't been into CNC for a long time. Maybe you've been into manual machining for a long time. Um, maybe this is just a hobby for you. Maybe you're just in school. Whatever it may be. This is really beginner level stuff. Today we're going to be talking about changing some of your operational plans in order to save tool life, in order to save time, in order to do um, large amounts of material removal fairly quickly. Um, all we're going to do today is show you a part that I'm doing that involves a lot of material removal and this is one way to do it. What we're going to do is we're going to mill out large sections of the profile before we flip it over to actually do the profile and sort of turning what could be essentially one operation into three but we're gonna save some time doing it. We're gonna to save tool life. We're gonna use normal length tools. We don't need to use, um, you know, the part is over two inches long and long range tooling is expensive. Um, you know, as you get over one inch for half inch, for example, what I'm using here, I'm just using what I got in the box. I got lots of half inch cutters, so that's what we're using. Um, as with everything, this is just one way to do things. Um, you know, you could do this part that we're gonna show you by sawing parts of it out. You could do it by removing more material than I'm going to. Um, you know, essentially this is just one approach we take to this job because it's quick and dirty. Um, it's a good way to do it. We use insert tooling instead of using solid carbide tooling for the majority of the material removal. Inserts are cheap, solid carbide tooling is more expensive, and so on and so forth. Okay? So let's go take a look. I'm going to show you what we're doing and then I'm going to show you how we kind of came up with that little system for it. Okay? Let's go take a look. So these are our parts. They are two by two cold roll steel. Uh, actually, sorry, it's hot roll steel, as you can see by the scale on the one side there. Um, these are going to have a giant rad on top. So what we've done before we uh, go into the rad is we've put these upright, as you can see here, and we've milled out it into steps like this. We used a one inch insertable end mill um, to cut that out. And the reason we're doing that is so when we go in here and we put it in the vise, in a secondary operation, we're going to do the rad in two steps. So staging the tool here, you can see we've got a half inch end mill in a solid holder. Um, it is a V7 plus A end mill. These are great. I got these from Valcarb. They work very, very well. So now all we're going to do is go do this rad in two steps. Now the reason we removed the material before is taking out all this material um, in steps with this end mill would take a long time, it would destroy my end mill. But when we stand it up, you can see here, look at all that material we removed before we went in to do that rod. Saves tool life, speeds up the tool uh, pass, you know, makes my cycle time a little faster. All in all, it's just one way to do it. Um, there's always a million different ways to do things, but this way kind of saves us a bit of time, saves us a bit of tool life. You could also cut it out with a saw if you wanted to, um, but this is just one way to go about it. And you can see here, here's the finished part after we've done both sides of that rad, much faster than trying to do it all at once. So there you have it guys. Again, quick little video. Um, I hope this is helpful. Just kind of a tool tip for you guys who are getting into CNC. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do something. One thing I will always recommend in this trade is you always have to have an open mind. Um, there's a lot of guys who would do this job differently. If you have different equipment, I would do it differently. Um, if I was even to reprogram this today, I programmed this job probably about two years ago. If I was to do it today, I would probably program it a little differently myself, probably take off more material um, in the initial phases, uh, just kind of saving a little tool life on my secondary tooling. But you know, you evolve as a machinist, your thought processes, you know, kind of get more developed as you see more and learn more, especially if you've been to multiple shops, you see other people are doing things. Um, that's one reason why I'm really glad for Instagram today. Uh, you get to see a lot of stuff. Without ever having to leave your own shop, you can sit there and just browse and see different ways and different approaches people are taking to things. It's very, very helpful. Um, as if you want to follow us on Instagram, our Instagram is at Lakewood Machine, L A K E W O O D Machine. Um, we're always posting there and keeping things up to date there, okay? Thank you for watching, guys. As always, make sure you like and subscribe if you want to see more videos. Thanks again. You take care.